Well, I'm joined now by Dr. Priyam Vardy Gopal, author of Insurgent Empire, Anti-Colonialism and British Descent, and, by prof the prof and professor at the Faculty of English at the University of Cambridge, and by Professor Richard Toombs, also from the University of Cambridge. And I wondered, Professor Toombs, I mean, last night we had Theresa May having to leave the room while the other EU leaders discussed Britain's fate. I mean, does that, in your eyes, constitute a national humiliation? I think of it more as an embarrassment than a humiliation. Uh, it's embarrassing if I fall off my chair now, but it's not, it's not really humiliating. And I think humiliation has to be... If it's a national thing, it's got to be something that the nation has done. And I think we're embarrassed at the, the, bad, the bad level of, of government, but I think it's not something that, in a sense, concerns us as a, as a country. Uh, I think of it so more as a black politicians. comedy. Yeah, black comedy rather than tragedy. And, yes, I do blame politicians. And, Dr Gopal, what do you think? Is it a national humiliation? Is it being framed in the right way? Or is it more like a black comedy and just a bit embarrassing? I think I'd agree that it is uh, comic um, and that it has been the butt of ridicule. And certainly looks like everyone's as, finding as it just funny saw. on different television channels. Um, and and certainly I, too, would blame uh, the political classes and the elites. But I would also say this, that one of the reasons um, that it has caused uh, ridicule is that it is seen as self-inflicted. It is seen as the playing out of uh, national divisions and national fights on a very public and global stage. So there's an element of parody in it, or self-parody in it, that I think we need to also be thinking about. Humiliation is not the right word, although people are framing it in terms of surrender and humiliation in ways that I think are very troubling. And what do you mean by that? Because I think that it's about the language that's being used, isn't it? That's your concern. Yes, I mean, I think that the language of surrender, of uh, comparing it to Singapore, of defeat, uh, of Britain needing to be liberated, Britain being enslaved and colonised, and uh, Brexiters being called upon to lead the British people out of their humiliation, I think this is over-egged language. Um, and I think there's a way in which um, the, the whole language of Britain being colonised and Britain being made to surrender to the EU is deeply troubling and really quite ahistorical. Um, very clearly shows a lack of understanding of the role that Britain has historically played in the world. Because Professor Toombs, would you agree, would you accept that Brexiters are harking to a kind of colonial past, a colonial agenda through their language? Um, not really. I mean, I think this is really a question about democracy. It's about who governs the country, and I think that's what's come to become, uh, in a sense, toxic. I think it's shown divisions in our society that we didn't realise were there, or at least not to this extent. I think it's shown that um, part of the political class is, has divided loyalties, uh, which people didn't suspect. And I think, it's, I think the lack of direction and the lack of leadership has, has created a sense of drift, which has been really the, the main cause of the constant radicalisation of the, of the language, of people getting more and more angry and frustrated. And what impact do you think that has? A sort of negative, you know, whether you're a Brexiter, whether you're a Remainer, we're now aware of kind of how we're being perceived in Britain, but outside Britain as well. How, what kind of impact do you think that has on the national psyche? I'm not sure what a national psyche is. Difficult um, to talk for everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, um, I, think, I think people have... I think people are worried about the way we're being governed and have had to ask themselves who actually makes decisions, who, who has the final say in great national decisions. Um, is it uh, a group of politicians? Is it uh, large business interests? Is it the media or is it the ordinary elector? Now, you might say it's, it's been a myth that ordinary people make these decisions, but it's a myth to which we've clung very much and it's really what we think of as the basis of our democratic life. If it turns out that this is nothing but pretense, then I think the, the possible uh, outcome is, is, is very serious in the long term. And for you, the seriousness is around the language, the sort of irresponsible language. Is that how you say yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, democracy isn't just form. It isn't just a question of going to a ballot box and, and uh, putting a tick mark or a cross. I think we have to look at the content of democracy. We have to look at the, the ideas and mythologies and stories and fabrications and, frankly, lies that people were subjected to in the lead-up to this vote. And it seems to me to not talk about the content of democracy is actually quite disrespectful 
accessible uh, to ordinary voters, to ordinary people. And what's been invoked through this is, you know, oh, it's, it's worse than Suez. Oh, it's worse than the IMF 1976. As clever academics, I mean, where would you rank it? Where, where do you put your ranking of sort of the most humiliating thing to happen to Britain? Well, certainly, and where is this? I think not as bad as, as Suez, which was, after all, a criminal act. And and people, people got died. killed. Yeah. Uh, not as bad as 1976 when it seemed the country was in a state of deep crisis. Uh, I think this is, uh, this is... I hope this will turn out to be a storm in a teacup, which can be resolved. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be. Uh, but I think it's given us a fright and it's made us think twice about our institutions. But do you think it's irresponsible of people to invoke those sorts of uh, examples from the past? Um, easy easy um, analogies with the past are usually misleading. Agree, They're a Doctor? form of political rhetoric rather than a pol of political analysis. I think we probably agree on that, if on nothing yeah. else. But I, I, I think that the choice of the rhetoric of colonialism has been very deliberate, and it is really striking that this language is being used in a country that has actually not made its reckoning with empire, where there's very little knowledge about how colonialism actually worked and what it meant. And I think comparing the EU's relationship to, uh, to Britain, to Suez, uh, and to anti-colonialism, and to a kind of struggle against colonialism, is actually deeply pernicious and, and deeply troubling in terms of what it's suggesting. Uh, you know, Britain humiliated many countries in the process of colonizing them, and that is not comparable to what uh, is happening in its relationship with the EU right now. Dr. Gopal, Professor Toombs, thank you so much for coming in, all the way from Cambridge. Um, let's take a look at tomorrow's papers. And